Hey guys, Papa Pete here, and today I'm here with a response video. Uh, Brett Weiss, who the author of the NES Om Omnibus Volume 1, A to L. Great new book. I did a review of it just recently ago. I'll put a link to it here, down in the description down below. Anyway, just recently put out a book and a video on his Tales from a Retro Gamer channel where he talked about his five favorite uh NES games out of Volume 1 of the NES Omnibus. So I thought I'd uh, jump on that one little bit further, and I'm going to do my top 10 favorite games of the NES Omnibus Volume 1 A to L. But I think I'm going to break it up actually into two videos. I'm going to do numbers 10 through number 6 here today, and then I'll release a video with numbers 5 through number 1 in the very near future. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on to my top 10 at least 10 through 6, of my favorite video games from the NES Omnibus Volume 1, A to L. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up by the age of 50, you don't have to. Now before I get going, I want to make the statement, the little disclaimer first of all, that this isn't necessarily what I would say uh, would be the 10 best games from the NES Omnibus Volume 1 8L. I'm not trying to say that at all because they're just my top 10 favorite. Actually, 10 to 6 for right now. But the bottom line is, is this. The absolute best games may not be my personal favorite. So big influence on me is the nostalgia of uh, of playing these games when I was younger, having them, having them, playing them with family, playing them with friends, and just generally the memories that they mean for me and how much I enjoy playing them today. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10. Now this game very well could be on a lot of people's top 10, and it's my number 10, and that is Blaster Master. Fantastic game with different ways of uh, different modes of gameplay. For example, within the tank itself, and then of course when you get out, you play within the mazes. Uh, back in the day, this game actually belonged to my sister, my brother-in-law, and I used to play it all the time when I stayed over with them. My nieces are about uh, about 10 years younger than me, maybe 10, 12 years younger than me. So I mean, I was still a young kid when they were small. I was like 16, and they were like six. We had NESs, and this is one of the games we used to play over there all the time. So Blaster Master is a lot of fun. It's a highly rated game as well. Not only my favorite, uh, but in any case, if you haven't checked out Blaster Master by Sunsoft, you really should. Number 9. Now this is another one that may be because my nieces had it when they were kids and I played it all the time over there. But at the end of the day, it's a fantastically fun game. And that is Capcom's Disney Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. Basically, it's just six little mini games, including the, the trivia one that you play as you go around as you're trying to collect keys to unlock the big gate or the castle so uh, Mickey and his crew can go in for the big parade or something like that. There's games set in uh, like the, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Haunted Mansion, Space Mountain, you know, all the big... Uh, things from Disney at the time. Now, when I played this back in the 80s, I had never been to Disney, and I have been there since. So it's it even almost means a little bit more to me now, although it changes so much over the years. But may not be on many people's list, but for me, it's one of my absolute favorite games in the NES Omnibus Volume 1. Number 8. Now, here's what you might say. How can that not be high on your list? Well, for me, I didn't play this game until much later. I think I was in university before I bought this actual copy here. I have the classic series of The Legend of Zelda. And yes, I got it when I was in university, late in university, might even just past university. But in any case, uh, man, it was so much fun. How much, you, what can you say about Zelda? Everybody's played this game. It's led to the biggest franchise probably on the system, except for maybe Mario. Uh, man, is it, why is it not higher? Because I didn't enjoy it as much when I was really, really young. That being said, I uh, played the thing the whole way through now, and what a fantastic game. And you can see why it's created such a franchise that carries on to this day. It's just getting stronger and stronger with each new Nintendo system. Legend of Zelda, my number eight. Number seven. Now here's an arcade game that you might think, well, 
you know, whatever, but this just happens to be one of my favorite because I can still play this one today. I can sit down with Mama C and her and I could play this game for a long time. We both love it, and that is Bubble Bobble. I think maybe I'm going to talk her into doing a live stream sometime. We're going to play this game start to finish, see if we can beat it as a, as a team. And uh, uh, I don't know, it's things like that about games that are, are so much fun, but at the end of the day, even back in the 80s, uh, this was considered one of the absolute uh, best games of the system because it's just simply fun. So anyway, love it, love it, love it. Bubble Bobble by Tato. Number six. So this gets me down to number six. And number six, you may think, why isn't this one out of this franchise? And why isn't some of the other ones which may be, might be better games or might be better known? But this is the one that I played most when I was a kid, and that is Castlevania II Simon's Quest. It had all kinds of faults, uh, but it tried to do something, uh, add something to that Castlevania series, which didn't really carry on, at least in Castlevania III. But uh, the adventure aspect of it, was it very well done? Uh, no, not really. But still, it was a fun game. Uh, frustrating at times, hard to figure out at times. Yeah, I really had to have Nintendo power to be able to do anything with it. But uh, at the end of the day, I can still remember playing this. My brother had it, my nephew, and it was just a lot of fun to play and try to figure out the, the things that were in it. Because, man, it was tough, I tell you. But uh, at the end of the day, this is another one of these games that I can't, I really want to go back and stream and beat it from start to finish. I don't know that I ever did finish the game. I really don't think that I did. But it deserves to be done. And by the way, there's one called Simon's Quest or Castlevania II Redaction, which is a fan hack that makes the the things that the, the village people, the villagers say, meet, make more sense. And it also does things like get rid of the, the adjustment to, from uh, day to night, makes those a lot shorter and quicker. And it really just makes some improvements to the game. So maybe that's the one I'll play, actually. Simon's Quest or Castlevania II Redaction. But uh, in any case, uh, with all of its faults, this still is one of my favorite games in the uh, NES Omnibus Volume 1. Well, guys, that's the first five of my top ten favorite games in the NES Omnibus Volume 1, A through L. And I'm going to say this right now. Uh, the next five might have some games that you're a little bit more familiar with, or you may anticipate a little bit more, but I bet you it's going to have some surprises in it as well. Anyway, guys, until the next video comes out, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up, Hey, Brett Weiss here, author of the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, 1977 through 1987, and many other books, and the host of Tales from a Retro Gamer. You have been watching Papa Pete, the old guy gamer. In fact, he's so old, he just might be older than me. Whoa.